I think that we have now to turn to Bertrand. Uh, and uh, what we are expecting, Bertrand, is that you would concentrate on environment, uh, mm. at least uh, yes, best, yes, best financing. Yes, yes, yes and no. I'm afraid I will not contribute to the euphoria. Yeah. And yeah. I will defer to my Washington neighbor to <laughs> cheer us up after that. Uh, so I, I will come from a different perspective, from the same conclusion as, as Jeff. Had. So we are 10 years, uh, as has been said, after Lehman. We are also 10 years after the Bitcoin, incidentally. Um, so where do we stand? Uh, and I would be very, maybe at the risk of being simplistic or too provocative, I say we have not really started to answer the underlying questions raised by the crisis. We have patched up the system. I think we have prevented the collapse of the system, and that's a good news. Uh, as far as I know, we are not on the verge of the Third World War, and we should be very happy of that. Uh, but I think we have not yet started to, to discuss what comes next and what is the type of financial system that we need to build. And maybe it's too late. That would be my conclusion if you want to start sleeping now. So we have two questions that, that, uh, that needs to be addressed. First one is, what is finally the type of economy that we want to finance? And environment, of course, is part of it. And then if we answer that question, how do we want to finance that economy? Uh, and my, my main concern is, is that in the past 10 years, we have not really touched the art of the system. So we have tried to provide an answer on the type of economy that was a, the big momentum of 2015. Uh, interesting date, a year before the Brexit and a year before Trump, when we adopted the Sustainable Development Goals, when we all signed uh, the Paris Agreement on Climate. So that was the roadmap. This is the type of economy we want. We want a sustainable economy that benefits everybody on Earth. And that's great on paper, and it's been ratified but for one on climate uh, universally. So we have the roadmap, and again, that's, that's a pretty good news. The bad news is that three years down the road, we are not there at all, and neither on the Sustainable Development Goals nor on climate. It has been amply demonstrated by the various reports published in the past few weeks, including the one from the IPCC and the UN. Um, so that's for the macro perspective on the question, what, what type of economy do we want to finance? On the micro aspect, I think we have focused on a piecemeal regulatory approach. So we have treated the bank and then the insurance and the non-bank and insurance, etc. But we've never discussed a holistic approach to the system. How do we want the system to finance the infrastructure gap, for instance, etc. We have not really de dealt with the ethical problem. We have dealt with compliance, which is a very poor substitute to ethics. And I think that's, uh, that's something which will backfire. It's not because you tick a box that you prevent the next problem to happen. Uh, we have done, in fact, very little innovation. So we should, I mean, there is a lot of market share in, in the media on the green bonds or social bonds, etc. but it's still a tiny drop in the fixed income bucket. So again, we have not really uh, made any real progress on that front. Uh, and basically, we are 10 years down the road, so good news, not pre-World War situation, hopefully. Bad news, uh, we, are not, we don't know where we're heading to. I think it's a, it's a traditional combination of more of the same and too little too late. To a certain extent, our, our conversation actually reflects that. We start now to be obsessed with the tree of the next financial crisis, and we have forgotten the forest of the climate crisis, and we have forgotten the jungle of the people's anger and resentment. So we are back to the technical consideration of the next financial crisis, but the big picture that emerged 10 years ago is still, is still there. Uh, it's very difficult to address now, because we are in a state of civil war at the global level. I mean, you have two models which have emerged uh, and which are on a colliding course, maybe not, I hope not. Uh, two new feudalism, in a way, the US one and the Chinese one. This kind of G2 order is not really an order, I would say it's probably more a trap, where people might be forced to choose between one model or the other, a transactional Trump-led America, or if I may be very aggressive, a predatory China with a Belt and Road Initiative. So how can we go beyond that? How can we really address the heart of the system, the root cause which has made finance, the, the, I mean, the legitimate scapegoat of this crisis? Uh, we have done a little bit on the reporting front. I mean, all these boring things, reporting, accounting, monitoring, etc. we've never discussed that. How do you want to focus on the long term when the basis of the accounting rules are based on liquidative value? You are, you are on mark to market. So how do you want to think 20 years down the road? When I mean, I've been a CFO for many years. I know you prepare a quarterly report. So you prepare things because a quarterly report is what matters for you, not what happens in 20 years, despite everything said by the great leaders. So we have to think about this. And the problem is that in today's world, I don't see where people will start this conversation on the fact 
on, on the way the system is run. So in conclusion, I think the question of trust, has been said by my neighbor and many, is central. And the problem is that trust is not there. The problem it is it does lead to a, a misallocation of capital at the global level. We have uh, too much money going where it's not really needed. I mean, why do people keep buying negative rate German or Swiss bonds today instead of investing where it's most needed, in Latin America, in Africa, in South Asia? That's, that's a real problem. I mean, you can build walls to address this misallocation of capital. It will not last forever. So we have a problem to address through regulatory framework. Again, it's not just solvency. It's not just Basel Suite. It's a combination of all this. And that every day I'm discovering issues in that framework which are just atrocious. I mean, not the big ones, but even the small ones are terrible. You have these perception issues which we know. We have too much compliance. You have too much risk aversion, and you can be risk adverse for five or ten years, not forever. So we have to find a way to, to, to move there. And if I, if I may really conclude with that, it reminded me of the, uh, sorry for the non-French uh, people in the room, but in high school I read a, a theatre play from a French play, uh, a writer called Jean Giraudoux, who wrote La Guerre de Troyes n'aura pas lieu. The War of Troy will not happen in 1936 or 37, if my memory is correct. If you remember, we are. This is, a, this is a, the setup, the stage. You have Ulysses, Odysseus in, in English, and, and Hector, we discuss and say, it's crazy, we're not gonna go to war. And these are the technocrats, the, the reasonable people, because of Hélène. I mean, we'll not have our kids killed for Hélène. But at the end, as we know, the war of Troy happened. And, and uh, Odysseus has this very tough word. This is a privilege, the privilege des grands. So the privilege of the rich and, and, and powerful is to think they can watch a catastrophe from their balcony. I think we are again at the balcony. We are afraid of the next crisis, but the real one behind it is not, is not being addressed. So my conclusion is that uh, we have not really started the hard work, and the problem that the window for opportunity to start this work is shrinking now. And we might have missed the boat. And, uh, I hope we are, not, we are on a solid balcony. I'm not sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was uh, expecting some kind of, uh, you know, happy uh, ending, but it's not exactly the case. And uh, to be frank, to all speakers, I would say that you might remember that the, the motto of IBM was if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And uh, we, we need solutions now. <laughs> and we should concentrate on the solutions. <laughs>